YouTube and Facebook followers. This is Half Man, Half Cichlid. The last few weeks I did a, a video on the nine primary causes of aquarium disasters. It's confession time. I've had an aquarium disaster myself over the last eight weeks. In fact, it's what prompted my video on the nine causes of aquarium disasters. What I'm going to talk about in this video is the disaster that struck my 340 gallon African cichlid grow out tank that I'm in front of right now and how chlorine was the sinister agent that caused the death of a number of my prize specimens. I'm going to also discuss and, and for my viewers what are the potential sources of chlorine that can affect your fish and how to prevent them from harming and worse, killing your prize specimens. This is a Capatochromus fireline meloto. A, a beautiful fish when it's colored out and he's the one fish that is still suffering from the effects of exposure to uh, chlorine and a chlorine burn. You can see his colors are washed out, he's breathing fast, he's really not interested in food and I truly do expect him probably to die like the 12 or 15 other fish that uh, finally succumbed over time to their chlorine burn. Here's a quick cartoon that really gets the essence of this video. What can we do to, to not expose our fish to too much chlorine? Quick lesson in fish physiology. The fish's blood runs through the gill membranes which has direct exposure to chlorine in the water and uh, this destroys the fish's hemoglobin. Perhaps the top reason for fish deaths due to exposure to chlorine is an Aquarius forgetting to add dechlorinator to the aquarium after a water change as the replenishment water is be being added to the aquarium. This is what happened to me. In my case, a couple water changes per month per tank times six tanks. That's 144 water changes per year. It's very simple for you or I just to forget a water change and have disastrous results. Here's a quick diagram of how a utility moves water from a water source through a set of pipes uh, and eventually the water ends up at your house which is on the right. A lot of things can happen between the water treatment plant and your house, such as overdosing of chlorine, uh, adding of chloramines as added disinfectant uh, during periods of uh, water contamination. Uh, the bottom line is that uh, the, the chlorine at point of use in your home can vary considerably both in terms of chlorine and chloramines. So what can happen is the water at point of use in your home can be supercharged with chlorine and chloramine, which of course uh, will kill your fish. This concentration of chlorine, when your tap water is supercharged with chloramine or chlorine, don't expect the dechlorinator that you use to be effective in treating that uh, super amount of chlorine. The next source of uh, chlorine poisoning of your fish requires a very quick lesson in chemistry. When we add dechlor to tap water, we're actually adding sodium thiosulfate to chlorine, which results in a precipitate. This precipitate can and does accumulate in the substrate of your aquarium after a number of water changes. And in fact, it can reach, the precipitate can reach a concentration where free chlorine is introduced back into your aquarium. 
and your fish are exposed to it. Now to explain the fourth and final source of, of chlorine poisoning of our fish, let's examine an aquarium that has just had water removed in preparation for tap water to be added back. On the left of this ray tank, you can see the replacement water, tap water, rushing into the aquarium. You can see on the right, there's an air stone gently running, and the individual is adding prime to that right side of the aquarium, opposite where the fresh water is being added. They've also shut off any and all pumps that recirculate the water. You can see what happens in this example with the prime being added on the right side of the tank and very little circulation. There's an accumulation of chlorine on the left side of the tank where the fresh water is being added. And as you can see, there are fish on that side of the aquarium who are getting more than their fair share of uh, chlorine exposure during this uh, addition of water back to this aquarium. So to summarize, the four areas that have the potential to wreak havoc with chlorine being added to your aquarium. Number one, you forget to add dechlorinator. Number two, the tap water is supercharged with chlorine at your tap. Number three, the chlorine precipitate accumulates in your substrate. And lastly, the dechlorinator is not adequately dispersed through your aquarium while the water is being added. So let's switch gears and now focus on what are the strategies to prevent chlorine damage to our fish. The first one is to buy bottled water that has not been and contains no chlorine. The next simple strategy is to add the dechlorinator to your tap water in a separate container. Mix it and then siphon it into your aquarium. The next strategy is using a drip system, which many Aquarius have been uh, successful with, where the inflow water is at such a low rate that uh, the amount of chlorine is really negligible and, and doesn't affect uh, your aquarium fish. As far as not forgetting to add safe or prime, whatever dechlor you're using to your aquarium before the water's added, I think here we have to be a little bit, bit creative. For me, what I'm doing is adding the bottle of safe to the top of the aquarium at the place where I'll be adding the, uh, the replacement water. I do this at the beginning of the water change in, in hopes that, that uh, I do not forget to add it. As far as catching those days when your water supply at the tap is supercharged with chlorine or chloramines, I started using chlorine test strips. And if and when I detect a, uh, a level of chlorine beyond normal limits, I will uh, postpone my water change. To keep the sodium thiosulfate chlorine precipitate from accumulating in your gravel and releasing chlorine back in the aquarium water, be sure to do regular gravel cleanings. To keep the chlorine from accumulating at one end of the aquarium, where your fish, in this case rays, have a uh, high exposure to the chlorine. To prevent this, turn on a power head or some other mixing mechanism in the aquarium so that the prime, which in this case is being added on the right side, quickly combines with uh, the chlor chlorine to deactivate it. One additional thing that I'm doing is installing a, a bank of filters to remove chlorine and chloramine just as an extra safety measure to make sure that uh, there are no uh, chlorine or chloramines entering my aquariums. So I've gone through at least uh, eight strategies to minimize or eliminate chlorine exposure in your aquarium. I hope you find one or more of these useful in improving the health of your fish. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Thank you.